Hello and welcome to Model Kit Stuff and in today's first impressions video we're looking at Airfix's 148 scale North American Sabre. So this is Airfix's 2022 decal release of their 2021 new tool kit um, and in here we have two paint markings um, both very very different different periods in time totally different countries and approaches okay so the Sabre is famous for being America's first sweep wing uh, jet fighter plane um, and it saw um, action in North Korea 50 to 53 and really was a response to the MiG-15 in a way and it proved to be very effective and although um, being a, a, a 40s design it, it was out of date fairly quickly in actual fact it's the most produced um, jet fighter uh, of all time at nearly 10,000 units all in all. This particular version being an F86F that has uh, a, a different engine than the original release it has a whole host of slight adjustments which actually made it uh, ever so slightly slower but much more agile and nimble which is why it was ideal for an aerobatics team which is what this aircraft here is the um, Joker and then uh, it was also made under license by Mitsubishi in Japan, which is what that paint scheme is there. So let's have a look more closely at the paint schemes. Uh, we have two paint schemes in the box. So A is the Flying Jokers Aerobatic Team number 332 Squadron, Royal Norwegian Air Force, uh, Norway, June 2nd, 1962. Uh, and that has this... Um, golden nose with the uh, joker card emblem on the tail quite a nice little design or we have the first air wing japan air self-defense force um chizuka um japan december 1975 um which has all the nice red stripes on and stuff japanese aircraft are always very colorful we can also see we've got the paint shout outs as normal there's quite a few paints being called out for both variants um, and then another three for the pilot so skill level two I think it was three flying hours uh, we have a little bit of history um, the ends as always just represent what's on the top of the box uh, and then we get our um, usual um, health and safety warning tells us that we've got cartograph decals and it tells us that it's a 2020 tooling uh, with 2022 decals made in India. Our kit number is A08110. Inside the box we've got um, a large bag containing all of the sprues, a separate bag inside with the clear parts as is Airfix's way. These are quite large sprues I have to say and then we have our instruction book which is quite a beefy document actually let's have a look at the instruction a familiar um, a4 portrait stapled um, color map printed um, manual um, as usual there's some history and some specifications in multiple languages um, tells us to uh, wash our parts before we get going um, and then as we turn over the page we have uh, more languages with the history some basic assembly instructions and the icons okay so we start our build with step one which is the air intake i think which goes underneath the cockpit tub that we can see there in step two then we're building up the um two seats that we've got they appear to have texturing on and as far as the instructions are concerned uh, the two seats are actually options, so which one you're going for depends on your paint scheme. So there's an A and the B. 
Um, then we're installing those seats in um, steps four and five, along with um, we've got a decal there with all the dials on, and another decal there with 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 more switches and bits and pieces. Um, then we've got our joystick going in. We've got two parts there for um, what is the cover on the bottom, so that should have some nice detailing on. Step eight and nine have us building up this um, front air intake, um, and then we fit it in 10, and then in 11, we have an option on fitting the, the nose. So it seems to be fitted either with or without this blanking plate of types. You'd have to have a look at that, but it, that looks like it's sort of um, the, the stopper they put in when she's landed, possibly. Um, then in 12, we're adding the pilot if we wish to. And then in step 13, we're turning her over and starting to build up the uh, landing forward landing gear bay. So we've got all sorts of detail already on there, and then we're building up these side, side walls. Step 14, um, and it's talking to us about assembling the model with the gun doors closed, follows step 14 and 15, um, or go to step 32 on page 7. Uh, and miss out step 16 to 31. So depending on what you're doing with the gun bay doors, you've got lots of steps here that if you're closing the doors, you're simply not going to have to do. So shows us that the gun bay, door, uh, gun bay interior, I think, being blanked off with these doors. And then in step 16, we start building up the interior if you wish to. So for me, all that lovely, lovely detail. Why are we going to skip that out? We're definitely going to have the uh, gun doors open and show all of that off. So we've got three guns going in there. We've got uh, the ammunition um, being put in there. All the different colours being shouted out, as Airfix always do. Um, they're, they're actually saying the ammunition is black. I think a little bit of research just to double check that and make sure that they're not actually... Um, brass, um, but I'm sure Airfix know what they're talking about. Step 23, and we're installing that, and then we're carrying on doing the same thing again on the other side of the fuselage. So you're not going to forget it. They do spell it out to you in simple terms. So by the end of step 31, we've got the uh, inside gun bay areas built up and installed in the fuselage halves. 32 has us doing uh, a modification and is referring us to steps uh, 55 on page 13. So obviously that's got something to do with um, how we're presenting the model. It doesn't actually say that that is uh, an option though. So I think it is something we'd have to do regardless of whether it's paint scheme A or B. We've then got some optional drilling um, which depends on whether you are having um, the air brakes open by the looks of it. And then we're building what will be the engine exhaust at the back. Step 38 sees us installing that. And then in step 39, we are installing the, the front end cockpit piece that we started off with into one half of the fuselage. Note that it's talking to us about adding 10 grams of weight there. That's because we've got a front nose wheel. So it seems to be suggesting put it in this pocket here. Um, so that needs looking at. Um, and then we have, I'm not quite sure what that part is, but it it's it seems to blank off that back end uh, and help make that sit correctly. Then the other half of the fuselage goes in, and then this piece here, when building the model with undercarriage up, assemble B29. So that's part of the undercarriage blocked up, so for in flight. Um, then we have, well, this is the lower wing, and Depending on whether we are landing gear up or down, we've got different things to do. Holes to drill for um, munitions. 
Then we've got a step 43A and a step 43B. And again, more options, um, some cutting and, sand and filing to do, depending on what we're doing. And again, this is all landing gear open or closed options. Then we've got step 44, A and B, which looks like, again, more options around the, the landing gear. It's certainly quite an involved build, isn't it? Step 45, and we are putting in internal landing gear surfaces into the wings there. And then in step 47, more modifications and another note when building this model with gun doors open, cut the leading edge of the wing tips off on parts E1 and E2. So does that suggest then that the wings only fit if the gun doors are short? Surely that's not how the real plane was. That's interesting. Um, Right, okay, and there's more conversation about this wing trimming as we go through the next couple of steps. More drilling for more um, ordnance. Um, yeah, and then we're cutting corners off if we are um, gun doors open again. Really interesting that. Step 51, we're putting the flaps in. Again, they keep talking to us about cutting this corner off. It does the same in 52 on the other wing. Um, and then in step 53, we are adding some small parts into the, the um, internal sections there before we mate it up with the main fuselage. Step 55, and we've got some of the fuselage parts going on. So we've got the root of the... Um, tail there and then the underside of the wings is installed we flip it over and put the flaps in which incorporates the wing tips tail is being installed using um, a traditional biscuit fitting so we need to be careful that we align that and that we don't have gaps it does show you a picture um, where you can see the angles it should be although there's no geometry given uh, we're then adding the tail flap. Um, whether we can, looks like we can probably um, animate that if we wish. Um, then there's a couple of panels going in. Um, and then we've got landing gear up or down options. Quite like that. That's quite a nice, easy way of doing that. Um, then we've got the supports going in afterwards and then we start building up the supports for is that yeah it's the landing gear supports for the for the wheels there so you can see them in that picture there gives you an orientation for which way they're facing step 69 and 70 deals with building up the wheels um, hubs are already incorporated into the wheels and the wheels are two halves appear to have um, weighted uh, flats on um, looks like there might be some tread on them as well so it'll be interesting to see how nice they are um, we've got a small panel going in uh, just behind the nose there um, and again we have options and it's telling us to refer to step 89 on page 20 we're on page 16 right now Forward uh, landing gear is built up and the forward wheel, again, two parts, hubs already moulded in. So a bit of careful painting required there. Um, and then we've got uh, the landing gear doors and some form of support strut going in. More landing bay doors. Seems, we seem to have options here for open and closed, even with the wheel down. Um, and it's again showing you a profile picture so you can understand what that looks like. We've got more panels open there, lots of panels we can have open. I'm really looking forward to how that will look built up. Um, then we're putting the air brakes in and the uh, struts for them, doing both sides. That gets us to 81 steps so far. Blimey. Then step 82 through to step 
85B is building up ordnance. So they seem to be two halves with separate fins. Seems to be the way they are going. Um, and we have some nice little pictures there um, showing you what those tail fins should look like and how they should sit. Then in step 86, we're installing those. And we have options again, um, depending on which ones we're using. So it's an either or, um, you can't mix them up. Page 20, this is our last page now. We've got some small little parts going on. Um, what look like glass parts going into the nose there. Um, I'm not quite sure what that is. Um, but that gets installed inside um, the canopy and then the canopy gets installed and we've got options for closed or open. I think that looks really nice. Then we have two separate A3 um, sheets. One deals with um, stencils and the other one has our two paint schemes on. So if we look at paint scheme A first, so this is our Norwegian aircraft, the Flying Jokers aerobatic team. And that's giving us um, a gold nose, um, some nice decals, these nice um, red wing tips. Um, so yeah, quite a nice little scheme there. We can see all of these red numbers in red boxes are decals. So we can see there's quite a few decals there before we even get to stencils. Um, uh, and basically um, it's a silver aircraft with um, an olive drab section so that the pilot doesn't get dazzled. We've got some uh, light gray panels um, and then we've got this um, gold nose. So I, it doesn't appear to be a decal the gold nose, um, but I think the edges, the black edges might be a decal. Or it could be that it, the whole thing's a decal and the gold is just for touching up. Um, we'll have a look at the decals in a minute and get a better understanding of that, but I think we're probably painting that rather than a decal. Okay, if we look at paint scheme B, so this is the uh, Japan, Japan Air Self Defense Force. So, uh, essentially, again, a silver aircraft with red wingtips and this red stripe. Again, plenty of decals, as you can see. Um, and this has um, drop tanks on. Did we have drop tanks on A? Yeah. So, we've got drop tanks, um, different types of drop tanks that can be used. Um, but yeah, essentially um, fewer colours on this um, with a couple of gunmetal sections and um, a little bit of light grey on the tip of the tail there, for example. Um, but mainly silver and red. have to say, I really quite fancy doing scheme A. Then we have another A3 sheet that's got all of our stencil information on. And there is a huge number of stencils to work through, um, which, you know, if you like me, you like doing the decals, that's a, a real pleasurable afternoon, getting all that done. Really, really nice. Um, certainly take you a bit of time to work through all that. Um, but um, I doubt that there's a single letter ever stenciled on that aircraft that they've missed. Just tons of them. Really, really nice. And these are all common to both paint schemes A or B. So decals now, as always with Airfix, they're very, very um, good decals. They're a high standard. We know the cartograph um, and that we have at the top um, section here, we have the common decals, which includes all those stencils we saw, plus some of the larger um, decals that are common to the aircraft as well, including the uh, cockpit um, internal dials and so on. Then when we drop down, we drop down into paint scheme A, which has most of the decals um, compared to the two paint schemes. We've got these big wing tips here brought out as decals, um, the joker card for the tail, um, the other markings 
for the aircraft, as well as some um, individual markings typical to um, the Norwegian Air Force. But that's the important one, that little black line there, that, that's the demarcation point for your gold nose. So you are painting the nose gold yourself. Um, and then at the bottom, we have the uh, Japanese Air Force. So interestingly, that big thick red stripe and the um, tips of the tails all being painted yourself. And then we've got the decals for the checkerboard and for the national markings. So first plastic out of the bag, this is sprue or frame A. Um, and what we've got is the two fuse large halves, the drop tanks and the lower wing and the tail parts. Um, and my first comment is it's nice hard plastic. Um, the new plastic they've been using is really, really good. Um, we've got panel lines and one or two um, fastener details in there. I'm guessing it's everything that is genuinely seen. Um, looks a little bit soft molded to me. Um, but it might just be the way the panel lines are done. We might get a better view when we look at some other some other parts. Um, you can see um, the underwing very nicely done. Some nice detail. We've got inscribed and raised detail on there. Looks really nice. Drop tanks have got panel detail on as well, so that is good. Um, the tail is one single piece, so there's no mating parts. Um, and we do have a little bit of sink as a consequence of that, just at the root. You can see there in the light, a little bit of sink. Um, nothing major though. Um, inside of the fuse large halves, there's no detail at all, so that's all being added separately. So you can see there we've got our openings for the machine guns and they are, I don't think they're open, let me have a look. No, they're not open, but they're so fine you can't tell anyway, but you could just run a fine drill through there if you wished. Um, yeah, quite an interesting fuselage shape that we've got sections that we've got to put in and lots and lots of opportunities for open doors. So I really like that. It's very crisply molded. Some nice detail being shown off. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Now then. That flap is molded in and I think that is giving us quite a, quite a sink mark along there. Don't know if we can pick that up in the light there. Can you see that shadow? quite a bit of sink in that bit there it's the same on that side as well and that's the problem when you do thick parts you're gonna get a bit of shrinkage so fuselage halves drop tanks but not the fins for the drop tanks Fundamentally though, that looks really quite nice. No major issues with that. Um, a little bit of fill and sand to do. Otherwise, um, clean up shouldn't be a problem. All good. Sprue B now, and we're primarily dealing with um, flaps and the upper part of the wings, the wing tips. We've also got some parts there um, for um, our dials inside the cockpit, um, which look slightly different there is slightly different arrangement we've got some gaps here so whether there's more stuff to be tooled at some point i don't know um, the first thing that's striking me is there is quite a lot of sink along the full length of both of these flaps and that's because they have put the underside in so rather than being two halves um, and the result is we got a lot of sink to deal with but this is totally smooth so we can fill that and sand away and it's we're not doing any harm so it won't be a won't be a difficult or even a slow process um, to do that the other flaps seem to be much better however 
um, because they're single halves, I guess. So that will marry up onto there. We can see the mating points, the, the donut style mating points. Now they in, in the past, when Airfix have used this donut system, that has created shrinkage and sink, but it doesn't seem to have done in this instance. Um, yeah, and then we've got our wing tips again. Those are solid parts, but there's no issues with that. A little bit of seam, that's all. Um, the upper wings look really nice. We've got panel detail on there, some fastener detail. And we can just see this little mark where they want us to cut the tip of the wing off if we've got the doors open. So I don't know whether that is just a fault or whether it was a detachable part in real life. Um, that they had to remove to open the doors. I don't know. If someone knows, please leave a comment below and um, help me understand that better. Um, pit hot tube there by the looks of it. And then that's our underside. So there is no issues with eject pin marks or anything like that. It's all well thought through. Only issue there is our sink. Everything else is crisp. Nice and cleanly moulded. Yeah. Throughout is B. Now, I thought the other one was B, but possibly that was D. And I didn't read it properly. Um, so on this sprue, we've got our cockpit tub. We've got um, the internal parts like the um, engine exhaust, the air scoop at the front uh, of the nose, um, the internal parts for the uh, guns and uh, where we're going to have the air brakes and various different open hatches. So we've, we've basically got all the internal parts there and so maybe a flap. Oh, that could be the tail, I suppose. Could be the tail. Yeah, I think that's the tail section. Um, so when we look at the cockpit, we can see we've got some nice wiring looms there. Um, they're not softly moulded, so... Yeah, they're they're okay. I think the the switches and things in the cockpit they're a bit softer than we'd like. They're a bit um, softly done. Um, we've got lots of little um, wires and bits and pieces um, and trunking and stuff in this bulkhead. So that's nice to see. That'll stand out nicely under a wash. Same with these bulkheads here. Some nice detail in those. It all looks very authentic and realistic. Um, I'm not seeing any issues, nothing shouting out at me. I've got a part that has started to detach itself. So expect to see that floating around in the bottom of your bag. But the sprue gates are quite thin. Um, so with them all being in the same bag, there is a possibility of damage. Um, uh, Nose there, all looks nice, our little shark nose. Flipping that over, some nice detail where we're going to see it. It's really quite nice. Not quite sure what that is, quite a lumpy bit of casting underneath there. Um, probably won't get in the way of that though. Yeah, all looks nice. Lots of detail where you want it. You can just see on here the shine of the release agent. So you definitely need to be washing these parts. Don't skip it and think you'll be okay. Nothing wrong with that. All very nice. Okay, the last of our grey plastic sprues, sprue C. Um, and this is all our small parts, basically. Look at how that's been arranged. That's very methodical, isn't it? Um, so we've got our pilot here, and then we've got our two uh, optional seats. We've got this little um, internal part of the air scoop, um, the internal canopy parts, the machine guns and ammunition. Look how it's all laid out. You're working in one area all the time when you're building. Um, then we've got landing gear parts. Um, now this was the thing that you had an option to install and it's got handles on and I, I reckon 
that probably gets painted red that goes in the engine so if you've got a part you can put those in so that's a nice touch then we've got our landing gear here again it's all together um, and then our wheels all together so you are working in one section at a time on the sprue I love that that's the same way they did it on the Hellcat and it was really nice to work through um, we've got some nice texturing on this seat so I'm assuming that this seat isn't supposed to have texturing on why would you do it on one and not the other um, seat looks okay the pilot he looks quite nice actually again uh, and there's a lot of there's a lot of detail in there and it all looks natural there is it does feel a little bit more softly molded than pre than recent other recent releases but i'm not i'm not dead sure i don't know just a niggle i've got seem to have lots of different wheel possibilities here um and i can't feel any tread on them so i think i think they are smooth i've not got my magnifying glasses on um, the landing gear looks really nice and busy though look at that that's lovely very finely molded some great attention to detail in here and some good engineering There's our guns, and you can see all the ammunition detail molded on there. Very nice. Lovely. Finally, our clear parts, and we've got two part can uh, canopy, and we've got some. Uh, landing lights there well, these are the ones that we saw right at the end of the build that go in the nose part of this section here um, and then we've got a couple of um, internal parts for the cockpit they're all nicely molded unfortunately there is a fair amount of distortion on all of the canopy parts so probably will look best in its open position and it's closed especially if you've got the pilot in um, but as you look through it forward on it's not so bad but difficult shapes to uh, mold but crystal clear very very nice we've got plenty of um, cockpit around it to paint which is slightly matter in appearance so you know what you're doing although my cockpit here is a little bit cloudy I don't know if we can pick that up but it's a little bit scuffed it's almost like something's been stacked on top of it and rubbed against it so it will need a little bit of polishing up that I think so there you have it Airfixers 1 to 48 scale North American F86 F40 Sabre what are my first impressions well um, generally, I think this looks like a really nice kit. Um, the highlights for me are that you've got lots and lots of options around how you want to display this kit. Wheels up, wheels down, gun doors open, gun doors closed, air brakes open, air brakes closed. Um, you've got two different types of drop tank. Um, so there's lots and lots of different options you can come up with depending on what you want to do. So I love that about it. Um, the two paint schemes, I, I've got to say, I do like both of them. Um, it's a little bit difficult to choose. I think the Japanese version will be the easier one to paint. It's got fewer paints, but painting the nose, for example, will be a bit more straightforward than doing the Joker one, although that is my preferred option, I think. Uh, when I come to do this. Um, the moulding, um, we had some issues with sink we can see but nothing major, it's all fairly easy to, to sort out. Um, 
just a little bit time consuming. Otherwise, the parts are great. The plastic's nice and hard, so it should be good to work with. Um, the, the molding seems to be a little bit soft compared to some of the um, recent releases um, that have come out of Airfix. I'm thinking about the, uh, the Spitfire last year in 172, the Mosquito um, in 172. And somehow this feels a little soft, but all in all, I think once painted up, this will look an absolutely cracking aircraft. So, yeah, um, I think it's an unusual looking plane and I think Airfix have really done it justice. So if it builds up well, um, then you're on a winner here. The instructions are very comprehensive. They're also very easy to follow, even with um, the complexity of the, of the build envisaged. It should go together relatively easily. And if, like me, you like spending time putting decals on, this kit is definitely... Um, one for your for your collection. It's, it's a lovely little kit um, and if you are interested in buying this you now know what you get in the box um, and hopefully that was helpful. There's something strange when I look at this though there's something strangely makes me think this would just look really really good in pink. Take care everyone enjoy your modeling and I'll see you very soon.